All right, everyone. Good afternoon and welcome to Riddled With This. I'm Zach, and today I want to talk to you guys about Negleria phalari, also known as the brain-eating amoeba. You guys are probably wondering, okay, what is this thing? It sounds like a word my two-year-old made up whenever I made a funny face at her. So what it actually is, is a free-living, single-celled amoeba. Now when we talk about free-living, what we mean is that Negleria phalari does not require a host to survive. It can live out its whole life cycle on its own, feeding off bacteria and other organisms without the need for a host at all. However, there is a really big caveat here. Negleria phalari is opportunistic. What this means is that if a host comes along, it will take advantage of it. And this is what causes a problem for humans. Okay, cool. So now you know what it is. Where can I find it? Where does it hang out? Negleria phalari likes to hang out in a variety of different places. It hangs out in lakes, rivers, soil, water heaters. It can be found in your tap water, hot springs, and even improperly chlorinated pools. Although that last one's rare. Little side note for people who love the ocean, you don't have to worry, it doesn't hang out there at all. However, where it does hang out, primarily lakes and other stagnant bodies of water, one of its favorite places is down in the sediment. At present, it seems to like to hang out down here in the south, although studies are beginning to show that it is moving steadily northward. Okay, fair enough. So why exactly is Negleria phalari dangerous? To answer this question, I have to tell you a little bit more about it. So, Negleria phalari can take on three forms. It can take on an encystated form, or a cyst, a trophozoite form, or a flagellated form. They're kind of cute. These are the two forms that can typically find their way into the human body. The flagellated form is a motile, non-feeding form that the parasite takes to move around. It can also switch back to the trophozoite form. Now, the way that Negleria phalari infects people is when we swim. Namely, when we get water up our nose. And I don't mean just like in your nose, I mean up your nose. What it will do is then penetrate and move through the nasal mucosa. It attaches to the olfactory nerve in the nose and makes its way right on up to your brain. And guess what? Your brain is delicious. At least to the amoeba. I don't know if your brain is delicious. It might be disgusting. But Negleria phalari likes it. So either way, if you have low self-esteem, know that at least somebody likes you. Now see, here's the thing about Negleria. While this is frankly quite terrifying, Negleria phalari isn't trying to kill you. Negleria phalari is like a lot of us. It's just hungry. And this is the part that plays into what we were talking about earlier with Negleria phalari being an opportunistic parasite. Remember, it doesn't need to get into your nose to survive. It can live completely freely in the water and eat what's in the water for the entirety of its life cycle if it chooses to. But like I said, it's like a lot of us. If there's food there, it's gonna try to get it. All right, so now we've tapped the surface, or pierced the membrane, into how Negleria gets into our bodies and up to our brains. What happens now? Okay, so what happens now is that Negleria phalari is in our heads, it's in our brains, and it's starting to eat our gray matter. I don't know if you know this, but your immune system isn't really down with that. So it starts to send out different immune cells to try to fix the issue, to address the problem, so to speak. Now in doing this, as happens a lot whenever our immune system fights anything, inflammation occurs. And with inflammation comes swelling. This is all just a part of your body's way to combat internal enemies. And this wouldn't be a problem for us if we didn't have a skull. Of course, if we didn't have a skull, we'd probably look like this. But because we have a skull, as the brain swells, it has literally nowhere to go. It's kind of like the relationship that some of us have with our clothes in the wintertime, right before we start to make our New Year's resolutions. And with all this swelling occurring in the brain, and nowhere for the brain to go for the swelling to be relieved, your brain is pretty much going to crush itself against the inside of your skull. Now what do we call this particular response? What do we call this disorder in the brain that's being caused by the parasite? It's called primary amoebic meningioencephalitis, or PAM for short. Now you're like, oh god, so is there a way to know that this is going to happen to me? Like, how am I going to know? What kind of symptoms do I have? I'll tell you. Symptoms of primary amoebic meningioencephalitis typically occur within about 5 days but can occur in as little as 1 to 12 days. Those symptoms include headache, fever, nausea, and vomiting. However, later symptoms can also develop such as stiff neck, confusion, inattentiveness, seizures, hallucinations, coma, and eventually death. The disease moves very fast and death can typically occur within 5 days after the onset of symptoms. However, Death can occur in as little as one day after the onset of symptoms and up to 18 days after the onset of symptoms. Now you're probably like, well, it really sounds like my chances here suck, but is there any way to treat this? 
The answer is yes, if you can catch it quick enough. That's one of the things that makes this parasite so dangerous is how fast it works. So yes, there is some potential treatment options available if you can get it fast enough. According to the CDC and a few other sources, some of the drugs that are typically used in treatment are the antifungal amphotericin B, the antifungal myconazole, rifampin, and fluconazole. Another more recently utilized drug is the antimicrobial and anti-leishmaniel drug, beltefazine. Even so, according to the CDC, the individuals who survived, it was thought that their particular infections were a little bit less virulent than others. Meaning that it seemed their particular infection wasn't quite as strong, though it was easier to treat. Alright, so that's a lot to take in, that's a lot to try to figure out. So, now you're probably thinking, okay, this sounds really, really bad. What are the chances I'm actually going to get this? And the answer is, frankly, that your chances are extremely low. Infection with Nigleria phalari is very, very rare. According to the CDC, between the years 1962 and 2021, there were only reported 154 cases of primary amoebic meningioencephalitis in the United States. The CDC estimates that there are literally between zero and eight cases reported each year. The biggest issue with this data seems to be, though, that because the number of cases is so low, that makes it difficult for government officials to actually report the number of occurring cases of Nigleria phalari infection but there are ways that you can prevent it from happening anyway. The CDC recommends that if you're going to go swimming, try not to bore around in the sediment at the bottom of the body of water that you're in, because that's where it likes to hang out. That's one of the big places it likes to stay. Also, make a point to wear nose plugs and clips. That can help close your airways so the amoeba can't get up your nose in the first place. Another thing is boiling your tap water, especially for those of you who use neti pots. So guys, at the end of the day, remember, yes, Nigleria phalari is very scary, it has a lot of damage that it can do, but it's not trying to kill you, it's not looking for you, and cases of infection with the Nigleria phalari parasite are extremely, extremely rare. So guys, I really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you guys have any suggestions or questions or anything else that you want me to talk about, any particular type of parasite, anything you've ever wondered about that you want me to look into and try to do a video on, leave me a comment, send me a message, and I'll be happy to talk about it. Have a great day.